squad is quads and welcome back to another review video today we are looking at the beta fpv gemini super g and super d first of all to get the legal guff out of the way beta fpv did send me this for free they are not paying me th for the review they have not asked me to say anything specific about the review they've not actually asked me to review it they've just said do you want one and i've said yeah go on then and i've used it and I feel the need to make this review video because well, I've got some important things to tell you. Beta FPV won't see this video before it's released. And as always, all thoughts, feelings and opinions in this video are mine and my seven personalities alone. On with the video. So what is the Beta FPV Gemini? To put it into really simple and straightforward terms, it's a... ELRS receiver and transmitter that's like diversity essentially but it doesn't quite end there it's a little bit more complex and it's a little bit or shall I say a lot more sophisticated than that see the beta FPV devs are constantly innovating and they've made this new system called Gemini which like I say is essentially diversity but it isn't, it's it's more than that. And I'll get into the details why it's more than that, because we already have a Maytech diversity receiver. So you might ask yourself the question, well, Quads, why do I need a different receiver if it's just diversity? Or why do I then need an extra transmitter module to put into the back of my radio if it's just a and that's the point it's not just diversity it's more than that so looking at some of the specs it's got two antennas it's made of metal it comes with or it comes in the format of micro jr bay but it also comes with an adapter to convert it to the full-size jr bay the adapter is plastic so whilst the actual transmitter is made of metal if you're using it in a full-size radio such as the radio master boxer tx16s jumper t15 or anything along that size you are going to be using a plastic adapter on the metal transmitter i've also used it in the radio master zorro which uses the mini or micro or whatever they call it these days jr bay and with that you literally just slide the metal bit into the back of the radio and away you go. Now it does use more power because of the things that it gets into and does and, and we'll get into that. So certainly on something like the Radio Master Zorro, if you're just using the 18650 cells, it, it is going to sort of destroy that battery life. And I did have not, not issues with it, but I did notice a substantial drop in battery life on something like the Radio Master Zorro. It's not to say it can't be used, it's just something to note. It's also got a USB-C connector to update the firmware as well, which, I mean, I've banged this drum a lot to a lot of manufacturers. Stop putting micro USB ports on. It's 2024. Thankfully, Beta FPV have certainly listened with this. This is a 1 watt EL RS transmitter, and it steps up as always, 25, 50, 100, 250, 500, and 1 watt. So the packet rates are obviously 50 megahertz, 100, 150, 250, 333, 500, D250, D500, F500, and F1000. It's 2.4 of this particular one. I believe there may be a 900 megahertz as well, but this is a 2.4 gigahertz. It also supports ELRS backpack. It has a fan to keep it cool i did notice that it does get quite warm but obviously it is metal which dissipates the heat quite nicely and there is a fan in there as well so as long as that fan's working i can't see it being any sort of issue but just just bear in mind it does get hot sometimes if you're running at max power which i've never done in the uk but i might have done in other territories officer it does get quite warm and the target name if you do need to update it in the elrs configurator is btrefp super g nano 2.4 TX. And if you needed to update the receiver, which I'm also demonstrating here, that's Beta FPV Super D for diversity, I would hope. The transmitter weighs 44.8 grams for anybody who wishes to know. Just on the back of the transmitter as well, before we get into the details and the nitty gritty, there are two buttons. And these buttons, although when it's set or when it comes out, it's set up that you can set it as bind mode, increasing power, uh, VTX channel, VTX settings. You can actually customize these buttons to do whatever you want with. 
and you do that over the Wi-Fi configurator. I'm not going to display that here because I've got to be honest, it's brilliant having physical buttons and I'd always recommend and support manufacturers who put physical buttons on things. However, I only generally use the Lua script for changing my settings. So it's great that the buttons are there just in case you need them. For instance, there's nothing worse than having a receiver that doesn't have a bind button on. Thankfully, ELRS are now moving in that direction as well. It's just not something that I'm gonna demonstrate purely because it's not something that I've done. So I'll put on the screen now how we enable Gemini mode because you do need to change a few things in your radio once you've put this in. Obviously, first of all, you're gonna need to change from internal to external transmitter within your menu settings. Then you're gonna to need to go into the ELRS Lua script and in antenna mode, you're gonna to need to change it to Gemini. Once you've bound your receiver, and you just need to go into the Lua script, go into the Super D and make sure that the RX mode is set to Gemini, which it should be, but just double check it because what you don't wanna be doing is getting this fancy piece of kit and not running it properly. Performance. So not only does the Super G have two transmit essentially two transmit chains and supports gemini obviously each antenna can receive or sorry each antenna can uh, transmit up to one watt of output power essentially what you've got here is two different transmitters sending two different packets at the same time and then you've got on the receiver end two different receivers receiving those packets but all working together now it's difficult for me to give a real world example of I flew this quad without Gemini and then I flew this quad with Gemini and this is the difference. I was originally going to do that and I, I very quickly realised that even flying in the same location, in the same area, the amount of interference that you get and thus the numbers that you may see on your OSD, even back-to-back -back flights, even in the same area, can change. You get, I mean, for instance, if you're in the middle of nowhere and, and you're flying along, you're doing a test, everything's brilliant and then a stream of cars all come past and they've got you know several people in the cars and they're all using wi-fi or, or 3g or 5g or 4g or whatever and you're flying next to that road that's potentially going to interfere with what your signal your lq is your dbmi is so to give a real world example as to how good this is is difficult with numbers from a touch and feel example what i can say to you is the second ever fly i obviously i i always test before i do anything at my field my field is big it's open it's generally empty there's generally not any people on there sometimes there is but, but generally there isn't anybody there so i'll do a test at my field if everything's good i'll then ramp up that test in and potentially go somewhere else with it with the gemini system i tested it on one day and then the very next flight it wasn't the next day but the very next flight of the quad and the gemini system that i used i instantly took it to a cooling tower this is an abandoned location that has security if i was to lose signal over the cooling towers and the quad was to drop there's no way to get in i had a naked gopro on the quad i had an o3 air unit on the quad and it was a you know it was a flyfish uh, vx5 frame so an expensive frame so ultimately i had a lot of money in the air on what was essentially only the second ever flight of this system and it performed admirably i had absolutely no interference my my signal strength was super high i'm again i'm not going to give specific numbers but i also flew a quad without gemini at the same location and the strength the dbmi numbers were significantly less on the quad that didn't have Gemini. And like I say, I don't want to give specific numbers because it, it doesn't give a true example. But what I can say is it's a significant improvement and it certainly makes you feel a lot better when you're flying in locations like this. Power usage. I've touched on the fact that using something like a Radio Master Zorro with the, the, the individual lithium ion cells, I noticed a physical difference. So obviously, essentially running two transmitters potentially at one watt i don't i don't use what genuinely don't use one watt but potentially at one watt my main concern with this was always going to be how much power it consumed you're effectively running two transmission modules at the same time effectively both using if you use the max power one watt on each so obviously the, the current 
draw from your battery will obviously double, won't it? The concern here being, obviously, it's going to use your battery a lot quicker than it normally would. If I looked at numbers for the best, I mean, I don't have kit to, to test specific current draws and, and all this technical super deep dive things like Mads Tech and, and Joshua Bardwell have. But I was looking at something like a dip of about 0.4 volts when this was on versus when this was off. So that's relatively significant if you're using a fairly small cell. If you're using something like a 3S, 3000 milliamp hour lithium ion battery, it shouldn't be a massive problem. You're always going to use that battery quicker because you're using two transmitters at once rather than just the one with the inbuilt on. And that's just something to bear in mind. But as always, the question is, should you buy it? And there is a couple of points I want to raise here. First of all, you're getting a rock solid signal. I've never had telemetry loss. I've never had a fail safe. I've been flying it for a couple of months now. I've flown in some very inhospitable areas. You can fly a normal receiver using the Gemini. Now you're not going to get all the goodness that you would normally get. But the point is, you don't then have to go in and think, right, okay, well, if I'm going to go out with this quad, do I need this transmitter or do I need... You can just leave the Gemini in, turned on, and it will work absolutely fine with a normal ELRS receiver. If I can just stop the review very quickly there, I haven't done this for a few videos, but if I can just ask you to like, comment, share, and subscribe, that would be amazing and help us continue this incredible growth that we are on together. Thank you so much. Now, I did mention before that it gets quite hot and I've done a little bit more testing since I recorded that segment of this video. And what I'll say is it gets warm, it doesn't get hot. So that's really not a not a negative or anything to worry about. It does get warm, but it, it does a really good job at keeping itself from getting actually hot. Now the cost of the unit from Beta FPV is $69. They offer it in black, red, and gray. I've got the black version. I quite like the red version, although it wouldn't match my radio. And I am a bit of a tart like that. So I'm glad I've got the black version. The Super D receiver is $18. And, and I've got to be honest, for that price, when you consider the amount of money that your quad is worth, let alone the safety aspect of having two transmitters and two receivers in the air at once, this is a, a no-brainer when it comes to should you buy it. The one thing I will mention is obviously the receiver has two antennas, two full-size antennas. I fitted mine to a five inch, not a problem. If you're looking at fitting this to something like a three inch or smaller, you might have to get a little bit more creative with how you mount it and how you mount those antennas. I probably wouldn't go any smaller really than a three inch, unless somebody can show me different of how to mount it on something smaller. I just don't think it's going to be practical. So ultimately, if you're a pilot who doesn't want to crash, doesn't want to lose their stuff, and doesn't want to have an accident and get into the trouble and, and the issues of having an accident, this system is absolutely rock solid. I am going to leave a link in the description below. It is an affiliate link. It won't cost you any extra, but it will show Beta FPV that I am somebody who is worth continuing a partnership with. So I would genuinely recommend that you pick one of these up. Until next time, you've all been amazing. I've been Quads. Peace.